how does God influence your lawmaking? You know, I, I, I was having this conversation with uh, Representative Murphy yesterday, as a matter of fact. And, you know, I, I go to Mass every Sunday, and during the interim, I try to go in the mornings, and my kids go to Catholic school. I went to Catholic school. I, I literally grew up in the shadow of a, a Catholic church. And so, you know, unwittingly or wittingly, if you will, religion and, and church has always been woven into my, my life. Here, it's kind of an odd thing because people do a lot of things and say a lot of things in the name of religion that seem at cross purposes, in my opinion. And I was telling Murphy yesterday, I said, you know, if, if all of us who are professed Christians, you know, whatever denomination you may be, if we just constantly remind ourselves what the Sermon on the Mount said and the Beatitudes and read that, then we know what we're supposed to be doing every day. And I think you see uh, representatives, whether it's their the denomination or their faith, they kind of use a little mishmash of whatever's convenient from a religious standpoint to justify whatever they may be doing in any given moment. And I don't like to do that. I, uh, I tend to think it's, uh, one is it's, in my mind, it kind of demeans the fact that you belong to XYZ denomination. It demeans the fact that you know you have millions and or billions of faithfuls across the world that believe something that you're using it to justify something that's uh, uh, not as important as some of the other things that we should be discussing. But I uh, I think it's important to to use whatever faith that, that gets you here or gets you, you past here to help, uh, help you govern. But I also think it's important to step back and say, you know what, irrespective of my faith, I need to respect other people's faiths. I need to respect the fact that other people have different beliefs. I need to respect the fact that some people don't believe, period. And while that may seem inconvenient to one who wants everybody to believe the same thing, it's a fact. And we have to live with that. And we have to be not, to me, tolerant is kind of a, a weird word. I think we have to be beyond tolerant. We have to be accepting. We have to be uh, accommodating. Uh, we have to be brothers because whether that person is not of your faith, you're still supposed to, tr I mean, I don't think Christ in the Sermon on the Mount said, treat only those who are like me like this. I think he said something completely different. And we tend to forget that. And you know, you, you can parse it out into, and I'll give you specific examples. You know, one of, the, one of the, the ones that I think is most incongruent are these pro-life issues. As a Catholic, life is life. It doesn't matter, you know, the Council of Bishops says the death penalty is not acceptable for a Catholic. And so you have people who, who are Catholics who claim to be pro-life, yet they're for the death penalty. And I would say that's not consistent. You are not pro-life. I don't know what that is, but it's not pro-life. And I think, uh, you know, our governor was one that campaigned on pro-life and being, actually campaigned pro-life and being a Catholic, he made a point in some of his TV ads to point out that he was a practicing Catholic. Yet I believe if you asked him, he's probably gonna tell you he's pro-death penalty. And so, is he really pro-life? And I would, I would say he's not. And I, you know, I tell people it's not good enough to be inconsistent on that because if you're doing it politically, and I think people use that politically, well then you need to point out the inconsistency in your own belief system. But we don't do that around here. Aside from that, um, are there any other issues or specific stances that you've taken on bills that you've turned to your faith for the answer? You know, I, I was, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, Representative Morrison's bill was it night before last? You know, I looked at the bill, and one of the narratives in the media that I've noticed in the last couple of days is they call it, you know, uh, most of them call it an abortion bill. And while in some form or fashion it is because it's it's manipulating or changing what we normally would do with respect to a judicial bypass, it also most of the stories or the narrative omits the fact that we're also creating this bullseye list for judges. And I, you know, you can read five articles out of six, and I don't, I didn't see any that mentioned the fact that 
This is what's going to happen. This is a consequence of this, this hit list, if you will. And so I, I started to look at the bill and said, you know what? All we're doing here, we're not really, we're not doing anything more than creating this, one, a dangerous situation for district judges, which I think is improper for us to do. And we're putting ourselves in the position of making the judge make calls that the physician should make. And I'm very uncomfortable with that. I, I have a big problem with that. You know, if the bill had, had created a situation where we're limiting abortion because uh, it's harmful or wrong, I could see that and I could follow that. But the bill just didn't do that. It does a lot of things that I think are unnecessary. They create dangerous situations, not, not only for young women, but for the judiciary. It puts the doctor in a position where you know, honestly, I don't even know what position it puts a doctor in, but it's certainly not one that he should be comfortable in as a physician. And I have a problem with that. I have a problem with us using those things to score points at home. And um, I, I won't be a part of that, regardless of my faith. And I, I, I have to actually pray about that because I understand somebody may look at that and say, well, Nevada's is not practicing his faith. Well, I would disagree because I actually... I have to contemplate what that means for me. And instead of, in my opinion, taking the easy route and saying, well, it's just easy for me to do this. No, I mean, I really have to parse these things out because it's not only is it important to me, but I think it's important to our constituency and it's important to the people in this state. When you mention that you hear God a lot on the floor and some sincere, maybe not sincere, you question, uh, when they reference it to guns and it's a God-given right, what do you make of that, uh, again, as a Catholic and just coming from your background in faith? I disagree. I mean, I, I think uh, there's a lot of things that God gives us. And, uh, you know, and I'll give you an example is uh, somebody that represents this open carry faction that, you know, you may know or not. They harassed me a little bit in the beginning of the session. They, they took it upon themselves to go to my district and make the comment that, uh, you know, if we had open carry, my district would be more prosperous. And if we had more faith, you know, faith with a capital F, uh, my, our district, my district would be more prosperous. And so I, you know, I, I hardly ever respond to those kind of comments, but I took the time to respond. I said, I don't see how wearing your gun outside your belt will make you more faith-driven or prosperous. You know, unless you plan to take it out of your belt and, you know, hold up a liquor store. I mean, I don't know what the purpose would be, but I think the idea of God giving us the right to, to carry guns, not to bear arms or not to defend yourself, but to just carry guns just for the sake of carrying the guns is ludicrous. It's not part of, I mean, maybe it's Old Testament stuff and whether that's what you believe in, that's fine, but I don't even think it's in there. And you know, we had several bills come through the session about people wanting to arm themselves at church. And I'm like, what kind of church is that? What, what, who needs to be armed at a church? Well, you know, I don't know, ISIS may come. And I, again, that's the last place we should be armed. I mean, we should be taking a break from, in my mind, everything that might be secular, that, uh, that uh, anything that connects us to the material world, that we should distance ourselves from that. And I think that's part of it. Guns, the discussion about guns, they don't have any place. And I know there's a lot of denominations in faith where the pastors are packing and, you know, again, I, I respect the fact that they think that that is their God-given right, but I just, I don't agree. I mean, that's, those things are not of the same world, if you will. I, and and I, I, I think we all need to kind of, like I tell my kids, we need to take... Uh, or practice mucho, take it easy, you know, with that, because it's not. And I wish sometimes that they would listen to themselves when they say those things. It's, I mean, the words coming out of your mouth regarding this issue, and, but for some, it finds purchase in some places. I mean, they say it, and some people will, you know, they'll hoot and holler, and yeah, but it just, it can't be that way. But that's just my opinion. What do I know?